So school is officially back in session and some of my kids were a little more excited about it than others. Now back to school season also means soup season. So today I'm sharing with you 20 of my top Instant Pot Soup recipes. I hope you guys are ready for this. Let's just jump right in. So you're gonna start with a small medium onion, but because I didn't have a normal onion, I used green onions. So I put those in the bottom of my Instant Pot. Next, you're gonna add a fourth a cup to a half a cup of shredded carrots. Just make sure you don't add more than a half a cup. Next, you're gonna add four cups of broccoli, all chopped up. And then on top of that, you're gonna add three cups of chicken broth. Now for the seasoning, you're gonna add one fourth teaspoon of nutmeg and then one tablespoon of hot sauce. I'm just using red hot hot sauce, it's my favorite. All right, and that is it for now. So you're gonna put the lid on. Please excuse my dirty lid. I made something right before this. And you're gonna make sure that little knob is turned to sealing. Then you're gonna push the pressure cook or the manual button and go down to three minutes. Now after you set your timer, you're gonna wait a few seconds and then your Instant Pot's gonna beep and it's gonna say on. That means you're doing it right, so go ahead and walk away from your Instant Pot. Now when it's all done cooking, it will say L and it will start counting up. So this has been done cooking for about three minutes. I'm gonna switch it over to a quick release, take the lid off, and my soup smells absolutely delicious. I'm gonna use a potato masher and just kind of mash up my broccoli because I don't want huge chunks in my broccoli soup. Next, you're gonna add one and a half cups of cream. Well, that's what the recipe calls for, but I'm actually gonna add one and a half cups of milk so it's a little bit healthier. If you want this to be a creamy soup, make sure you use cream. If you don't really care and it's a little thinner, you can use just normal milk. And the last thing to add is two cups of cheddar cheese. The soup is still really, really hot, so I'm just gonna mix this around and the cheese will melt into it. Now, if you wanna thicken up a little bit, you can push cancel and then saute and get rid of that extra liquid to have it more chunky. But obviously, I used milk, so it's gonna be a little thinner. If you use the cream, it will be a lot thicker for you. Now, on top, I added a little bit more cheddar cheese and a few more green onions. So I pushed the little saute button. There we go. Um, about a few, well, maybe five minutes ago or so. So this is starting to get nice and hot. So I'm just gonna add about two, or okay, two teaspoons um, of olive oil. I never measure my olive oil. As long as it kind of covers the bottom, you should be good. Okay, then I cut up an onion. I'm only gonna use half an onion right now. And then, you can hear me over this. This is a teaspoon of garlic. There we go. Okay, and we're just gonna saute this for just a little bit. Usually, you'd wait a few minutes to let the onions get really soft, but we're just, we're just gonna continue on. Okay, I did cheat. After these take about five minutes to cook through, then you'd usually add your meat and brown your meat in with it. But because I'm gonna save a few minutes, I already browned it. Don't be mad at me, I did it on the stove top, but you can easily do it in your Instant Pot just at the same time your onions are gone. So I'm just gonna dump that in. We'll pretend that I sauteed it in the Instant Pot. So this is two pounds of, I had a lot of people wanting some ground beef recipes. Now my 13 year old daughter, she struggles with ground beef. So this is ground turkey, but you could easily use ground beef. So usually you'll just brown your meat in here until you can do it until it's all the way cooked through or if there's just a little bit of pink, that's okay because it's it's gonna cook in the Instant Pot too. So we'll just let it be. Okay, if you can see this, onions are mixed, meat ready to go. It's It calls for two pounds, so it's a lot of meat. So if you don't want that much meat, you can easily just do one pound. We're gonna add three peppers. I cut these up so you didn't have to see them cut because you know, not the best at cutting, I'm a mom. I don't, I never went to school for it, so I cut really bad. Anyway, three peppers, <laughs> different colors. You can add whatever you want. My family does not love green peppers, so I don't use a lot of those, so red and yellow is our favorite here. Next, we're gonna add like two to three cups of chopped 
cauliflower. Now, if you don't like the cauliflower rice, you can easily add in just normal rice, but I really like the cauliflower. My kids can't really tell a difference. Two or three cups of this. I love how it's already pre-cut because chopping cauliflower is great. It just takes a lot of time and I don't have a ton of time. Now, so this doesn't get any burned on the bottom, we're gonna add four cups of beef broth. I love buying these because it's automatically four cups. I don't have to measure anything. I just dump it all in. Next, we're gonna add a can of green chilies. I just, I love green chilies and I love it with peppers. So throw in one of those in too. So now I have one can of tomato sauce, if you love tomato sauce. Then we have some fire roasted tomatoes. Now, sometimes it's a little hard, at least right now, to find certain things. So fire roasted tomatoes were super hard to find in my grocery store. So I got crushed tomatoes. Usually if you, if you don't want fire roasted, you could just use diced tomatoes, but I'm using crushed. Too. And then we're just gonna add a half a cup of coconut milk. So this makes it nice and creamy, but without all the calories of like cream. So I'm just gonna add about half a cup here. Okay, then we just need a few spices. So we're gonna add one teaspoon of oregano, one teaspoon of onion powder, and then one teaspoon of basil. Love adding the seasonings in there. And then just kind of salt and pepper to, to taste, however you guys like. The good thing is you can always add more seasoning when it's done cooking. We're just gonna mix this together. If you can see, I am like right at the top. There is enough liquid in here that it will pressurize without burning, which is my favorite, but also is not super, super thin. So it'll be good. I'm excited. Okay, so because you've already cooked the, the meat, we're just gonna do um, the pressure cook. There it is. Oh, pause one sec. We need to push cancel because the saute button's on. Now we can push pressure cook. Because everything is pretty much already cooked, I would say cook it for about seven minutes because six or seven, seven, because it is, it is thick. It's gonna take a while to cook. So we're gonna cook for seven minutes, let it sit here for a little bit. And yeah, so this is my Instant Pot Duo Nova. So I don't have to turn the little knob, but if you do have a knob, make sure it's turned to ceiling. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is kind of saute the vegetables to get them just a little bit softer and full of flavor. So we're going to go over to our Instant Pot. Now this is the Lux. It's an older version, but it, all the Instant Pots should have a saute button. So you're gonna just push the saute and then wait for it to get hot. So once your Instant Pot's hot, we're gonna add just two tablespoons of butter and two tablespoons of olive oil. Then we're just gonna mix this around, melt our butter, get the bottom hot and toasty so we can cook the vegetables. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna put in there is just one onion, all chopped up small. I like little onions. Then we're just gonna add about four to six stalks of celery, depending on if, how much you like. Then I'm gonna add four large carrots that we cut into little pieces, or if you're lazy, you can always just throw in some baby carrots, but I like, I like how these taste. Okay, once our vegetables are in, we're kind of just gonna stir it around with the oil and the butter just to brown them up a little bit. So this will take about two to three minutes just until your onions start to get soft, your celery starts to get soft, but don't worry, your carrots will cook as your Instant Pot cooks. Okay, as your vegetables are cooking, we're just gonna add four teaspoons of garlic in there. Make that smell really good with the onions. Okay, so it's been a few minutes. Now I'm going to add all my other stuff. So first I'm gonna just add two cans of crushed tomatoes. Now you wanna leave the juice in there because this is a soup. So you want it to be soupy. Mix that around a little bit. You can still have your saute on. It, will, it won't hurt anything. Now we have three tablespoons of tomato paste that we're gonna throw in there. Now I am just going to eyeball it because, you know, that's how I roll. Then we're gonna just add one packet of ranch. Now my secret, this is Kroger Ranch. Now you can buy name brand ranch, but you'll pay almost a dollar more. I love buying store brand because it's literally the same ingredients and it tastes just as good. So save a dollar here and there when you buy store brand. Okay, we're gonna mix this in for a little bit. Mmm, it's starting to smell really good. Okay, now we're gonna add the beef broth. Okay, so we have 
Because it's a soup, we're gonna add four cups of beef broth, which is this whole entire container. I love buying these containers because I don't have to measure. I can just pour it all in. Okay, mix that around a little bit. Now we're getting pretty full on our Instant Pot. So this is a six quart. If you're gonna make this recipe with a three quart, you want to half the recipe or it's gonna overflow. So I, you can make this recipe just fine in a six quart or eight quart. All right, now the most important part is the meatballs. I just have a 32 ounce bag of frozen meatballs. This is one of my favorite brands. It's cooked perfect. This is kind of, these are the meatballs that I buy all the time. So I'm just gonna dump those carefully in without splashing too much. Okay, mix those around a little bit. Now there's enough liquid in here, it's not gonna burn. It's gonna be just perfect. So we're gonna put the lid on right now. Make sure that this little knob is turned to sealing, not venting. Now, because we have the saute button on, we need to turn that off. So we have to push cancel. So we'll push cancel and then we'll push either, this is the old version, so it's a manual button or pressure cook button, depending on what you have. Now I love this because meatballs only take seven minutes to cook. So once you set the timer, you can just walk away. So when the timer is done, you're just gonna turn the little knob to venting to let out all the pressure and steam so the lid can open. So once the lid is up, oh, it smells so good. Nice, okay, we're gonna just dish it up and you guys will see just how yummy it is. Now my kids like this because they love the meatballs in it. I swear that's their favorite food. I like it because there's vegetables and other good things in it. Okay, so we're just gonna add some toppings onto it. So we like to add cheese because my kids will eat anything with cheese, right? And then just a little bit of green onions on top. Just give it a pop of color and a little bit of flavor. All right, guys, there you go. We're gonna first start by pushing the saute button. We're gonna brown the meat. Now I'm using ground turkey because that's one of my favorite things to cook with. You can use ground beef if you want. Now I have this little thing called a chop and stir. It's a game changer when cooking your meat. When your meat is browned, you're gonna add one seven ounce can of diced green chilies, one 10 ounce can of Rotel tomatoes, one can of corn, and I left most of the liquid in there, one can of black beans, which I did rinse, and then one can of garbanzo beans. Then we're gonna add one can of diced tomatoes. Now it's time to add some of the spices. I'm gonna start with a half a teaspoon of pepper, and I'm kind of just eyeballing this, and a half a teaspoon of salt. Same, just kind of eyeballing. Next, we're gonna add a half teaspoon of onion powder, one half teaspoon of oregano, one teaspoon of onion powder. Now I had a half teaspoon, so I had to add two here. And one packet of ranch dressing mix. Now I know that sounds weird, but it makes it taste so good. Then you're also gonna add one package of taco seasoning. I like to use mild. Then we're gonna add four cups of chicken broth. This is soup, so now we really need to make it into soup, so four cups. So I just mixed it up just a little bit before I put the lid on just so all the dry spices will be moist. Now it's time to put the lid on, make sure that it's sealed all the way, and you're gonna turn that little knob to sealing, not venting. Then because it's the saute button, you have to push cancel first, then you're gonna push pressure cook, and you're gonna go all the way down to five minutes. Because our meat's already cooked, we just need to make it warm. When it's ready to go, it will say on, that means you've done it right. All right, when it is all the way done, I did a quick release to let the steam out pretty quickly and it was all perfectly heated through and delicious. I like to add cheese, sour cream, even some tortilla strips on top of my loaded taco soup. Now I'm gonna start by cutting up half of an onion. Now if you choose to use a whole onion, that's totally fine. I love onions, so the recipe calls for half, but I'm gonna use a whole onion. Next I have five celery stalks, and you're just gonna cut them up into thin pieces. If you want your celery thick, you can, but I like it thin, so my kids really can't tell that it's there. Next I'm chopping up some carrots. Now I used a one pound bag of carrots. I'm just chopping up into bite-sized pieces. You can also use about five normal carrots, chopping them up. Now on top of that, I'm adding about three cloves of garlic or two teaspoons of minced garlic. Now the rice that I like to use is a wild rice blend. You can use just straight wild rice if you like. So we're gonna add one cup of wild rice. 
And as you can see, I did not rinse this rice and it was still just fine. Now you're gonna add four cups of broth. So I'm using chicken broth. You can also use vegetable broth if you want it to be vegetarian. Now it's time for the seasoning. So I'm gonna add one teaspoon of poultry seasoning. Now you can find poultry seasoning at almost any grocery store. I found mine at Walmart. So you're gonna get a teaspoon and just dump it right on top. Next, you're gonna add one teaspoon of salt. Now, I'm just using table salt. If you have other salt you like, that works great too. Just, you need to add a little bit of salt or it won't have a lot of flavor. And the very last ingredient is mushrooms. Now, if you don't like mushrooms, you don't have to add them, but I love mushrooms. So you're gonna put your lid on, make sure that your little knob is turned to sealing. Then you're gonna push the pressure cook button or the manual button and you're gonna go up to 45 minutes because it's wild rice, it takes a while for it to cook. Now when it's done, I switch the knot over for a quick release. Once all the pressure is out, you can go ahead and take the lid off and your soup is gonna smell delicious, but you're not done yet. You need to make it a creamy soup. So on my stove top, I'm gonna take a pan on medium high heat and add six tablespoons of butter, let it melt a little bit, then add half a cup of flour. And you're just gonna mix that around until everything becomes nice and smooth. Now you're gently going to pour in your milk, mix as you pour, so it will become nice and smooth. The goal is not to have it chunky. Now once it's all smooth, you can go ahead and pour that right into your Instant Pot. Now I just took a whisk and slowly started mixing that in. If you do have some chunks of flour, that's okay. It will be smoothed out as you whisk in your Instant Pot. Now once you're done, you just pour it into individual bowls and I like to serve mine with a side salad and then also a delicious French bread on the side that they can dip into. Now, if you wanna cook your hamburger in your Instant Pot, you can. All you have to do is push the saute button, put your meat in there. I would also put your onions in there and you'll cook them together. I cooked my meat in advance. I'll put a link in the description for you on how to cook it inside your Instant Pot. Now onto the chili, I have one pound of cooked ground beef. I have three stalks of celery that I chopped up and then one whole onion. You don't have to use a whole onion. I just like onions, so I like to do the whole thing. On top of that, you're gonna add one can of kidney beans. I use dark kidney beans and I drained them, rinsed them and drained them. Then you have eight ounces of tomato sauce and two cans of diced tomatoes just thrown right on top. Now with one of those cans of diced tomatoes, I just filled up about half a cup of water and dumped it in the pot. Now the next thing is one fourth cup of ketchup. You can measure if you want. I just always eyeball my ketchup. This next step is optional, but my mom always does it, so you add one tablespoon of sugar. Then two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire, Worcestershire, lots of comments about that one. You can say it how you want. I call it Worcestershire sauce. So you can mix it around a little bit if you want to, but it's all pressurizing together, so I just put the lid on. Make sure your little knob is on sealing, not venting. Then I'm using, of course, the manual button. So if you have a different Instant Pot, you use pressure cook, just anything to make it pressurized, just normal. And you're gonna cook it for 10 minutes. Now you can turn the knob and let the pressure release or you can let it release on its own. Now the chili is all the way done. You're gonna just mix it up a little bit. And when you serve it, add your favorite toppings. I love cheese and corn chips. So you're gonna start with one onion chopped up and two large sweet potatoes peeled and chopped. And they're gonna go right in the bottom of your Instant Pot. Next, you're gonna add about one cup of broccoli. I added about two cups because I love broccoli. Okay, then you're gonna add one to two cups of carrots. I just added the whole bag. Now to add the seasonings. You're gonna add one teaspoon of parsley then one teaspoon of thyme leaves. And on top of that, you're gonna add about one teaspoon of pepper. Then add one to two teaspoons of salt. Now, if you're making this vegetarian, you could add vegetable broth, but I like chicken broth, so you're gonna add four cups of chicken broth. Now it's time to put the lid on, make sure that it's closed all the way, and that your knob is on sealing, not venting. 
Now because it's mostly vegetables, you only have to cook it for five minutes. I pushed manual for five minutes. And because there's no meat, you can also push it over to venting as soon as your five minutes is up. Again, if you want this vegetarian, don't add the bacon bits, but if you do like bacon, you can add as much or as little as you want. I just added a small package of it. So now we need to make the soup creamy. So we're gonna add two cups of whole milk. You don't have to add whole milk, you can use skim if you want, but whole milk will make it nice and creamy. After I added my milk, I pushed the saute button so I could mix in the milk and the bacon and so everything is cooked together and the milk will warm up. I only had to saute it for about two minutes before everything was heated through. This is a perfect meal for a really busy night because you only have to cook it for about five minutes. I'm gonna start by adding two cans of canned chicken. Now you can use rotisserie chicken, you can also use just thawed chicken or frozen chicken. I'll tell you how to do that in just a second. So right now I'm just gonna add my two cans of already cooked chicken into the bottom of my pot. Next you're gonna add one pound of carrots. I just use the bag carrots, but you can use other carrots too. Now the recipe called for a can of corn, so I just cut up two ears of corn and then also one half onion. And I'm just gonna dump that on top of the carrots. Next, I added six cups of chicken broth. So I had a carton, which is four cups, and then a can, which is two. If you feel like you need more chicken broth, you can go ahead and add one to two more cups of chicken broth. Then I'm gonna add about a half a cup of green onions, all chopped up. Now for the spices, I'm gonna add about a half teaspoon of garlic powder, and a little bit of salt and pepper just for taste. Now, if you have pre-cooked chicken, you're gonna add your egg noodles right now and everything's just gonna cook together. So I added a whole bag. It was a lot of noodles. If you don't want that many noodles, I would probably do a half a bag or three-fourths of a bag. So right now I'm just mixing it a little bit before I put the lid on. The noodles don't have to be covered. All right, so my lid is on, make sure it's on sealing, not venting, and I'm gonna go to five minutes. Now, here's the trick. If you want to cook thawed chicken that's not cooked yet, you're going to take, don't put your any vegetables in yet, and you're gonna go up to 20 minutes and just cook your chicken broth and your chicken. Then the last five minutes, you're gonna put everything else back in and cook the rest for five minutes. If your chicken is cooked, you're gonna cook it all just for five minutes at the same time. I did a quick release there, so I let all the steam out. Then once all the steam's out, you can open your lid and your chicken noodle soup is all done. I love that if you have pre-cooked chicken, it only takes five minutes to throw this recipe together. So we'll first, I'm gonna start with this, an, an Instant Pot. I have a six quart. I usually cook with my six quart. You can make this in the three quart or the eight quart. The three quart, it might be a little full, so you might have to cut it in half, but the cooking time will be the same. Okay, so first I have three potatoes. Now you're supposed to peel the potatoes, and if you've been around for a while, you know that I hate peeling potatoes, so I never do. But I wanna show you this. So this is the secret with the five minute clam chowder. This is the size of my potato. It's really thin, really small. If you make your potatoes that size, then you can cook it for five minutes. So that's the secret. So I have three potatoes. I have two stalks of celery and then one onion. We're just gonna just dump it in. There we go. Now you have a few options. This recipe calls for four cans of clam chowder. Nope, of, oh my gosh, of clams, not clam chowder, that's what we're making. So you can use the liquid. Oh, I took out my lids. You can use the liquid for your liquid in here, or you can just use a half a cup of water. Today, I'm just gonna do a half cup of water. I just need it to pressurize for it to work. So that's all we're gonna do. That's, you just have to cook the vegetables right now. So that's what we're working on. So, half cup of water, put your lid on. You're gonna do it, oh, cancel. You're gonna cook it for just five minutes and then make sure this little knob is turned to sealing, not venting, and then you can just walk away. But I actually need this, so we're gonna take this back out. So we're gonna pretend that it's cooked and it cooked for five minutes. After the five minutes is done, you're gonna turn this little knob to venting. There we go. And let all the pressure out. 
once all the pressure's out, we're gonna magically have cooked vegetables. So I'm gonna put that right there. And I already have some cooked for you so we can finish making this recipe. Okay, so I use water in here also, if you can see. Here we go, the cooked vegetables. Um, so you're gonna push cancel when it's all done, and then you're gonna push the saute button. We gotta get it kinda hot in here, so that is the plan. All right, you're gonna take your four cans of clams, not clams, there we go. And you're just gonna dump them all in. Now if you've already dumped in the juice, that's fine. You just make sure you want all four cans. This makes it, mm, I love when there's extra clams. That's like my favorite. Okay, got all my clams in. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna put some spices in. So I have one and a half teaspoons of thyme, one and a half teaspoons of basil, and then just like a teaspoon of salt, and a little bit of pepper. You can add more too after it's done cooking so you can see like how much salt and pepper you, you need. Everyone is different with salt and pepper, so you, you do you. Okay, let's see, what else do I wanna do? Now you can um, do your garlic in with the vegetables and have it cooked that way, but I love a little bit of garlicky recipes so you can taste the garlic, so I'm gonna put it in right now. So I'm doing like about two cloves of garlic that you put in. Then, I know this might sound gross to some of you, but this makes it taste good. We're doing a can of cream of mushroom soup. We're gonna make it nice and creamy and just tastes so good. And I have six pieces of bacon. I always get the pre-cooked kind because I'm lazy. And yeah, so I already pre-cooked it, chopped it all up, and it is ready to go in here too. And last but not least, now you don't want to cook with this because you don't want it to curdle. So if you notice, I cook my vegetables first, then we saute. As we're sauteing, we're adding three cups of half and half, and we'll just pour that in. There we go. It's gonna be nice and creamy, I'm so excited. That is literally it. Now, you're going to just wait a little bit because obviously we're on saute. We're gonna wait until it starts to cook, but all your vegetables are cooked. We're pretty much just heating it up so everything is cooked through um, and it is warm. So we're just gonna mix around, but it really is so, so yummy. Now, I love serving this. I don't know if you guys can get bread bowls where you're at or if you've had bread bowls, bread bowls and clam chowder is like my happy place. So you can always go to your local bakery, see if they have any, they usually do in the winter time. Um, if not, you can always ask them, say, hey, will you guys make bread bowls? And they can get it to you. You can do like a special order of bread bowls and they'll make them for you. It might take like three days to get, but or you can just get in the rolls, dip it in, whatever you wanna do. Okay, obviously this is not cooked all the way. So I usually let it like sit on saute for about 10 minutes or so. Just keep mixing, make sure you mix everything together. But for the most part, it's it's amazing, guys. So you're going to just keep it on saute until it, one, if you want it heated all the way through. If you want it really thick, you just keep it on saute, it will thicken up. Um, I did add water in there to cook the vegetables. If you wanted to drain that water out, it won't take as long to thicken, but it's, it's totally up to you. I'm not much of a, texture isn't a huge thing with clam chowder with me, and so I kind of just, yeah, when it's done, it's done. My kids will eat it and I'm happy. So I'm gonna start by pushing the saute button because I need to cook my meat. Now, if you already have pre-cooked meat, that's gonna make this go by even faster. So right now, because it's sauteing, I put my meat in and I have this little chopster. I will put a link in the description for you because this is my favorite tool in the kitchen. Well, other than the Instant Pot, of course. So I'm just gonna brown my meat just right inside of my Instant Pot. Now once it's almost all the way cooked, I'm gonna go ahead and add one whole onion and then mix that all together just so the onion can brown a little bit while the meat finishes up cooking. Now I'm gonna leave that there for just a little bit and stir every few minutes, but while that's finishing cooking, I'm gonna chop up one zucchini, two stalks of celery, and then pour those into my Instant Pot with my meat and my onions. Now I also chopped up two cups of small potatoes and about two cups of carrots. On top of that, you're gonna add about one teaspoon of chopped up cloves. Um, you can use whole cloves if you want to. Then you're gonna add one can of diced tomatoes. Now I'm putting those in now because my saute button is still on and I need some liquid on the bottom of my pan. All right, I'm gonna just mix these up a little bit and then continue adding more things. 
All right, so right now I'm gonna add one tablespoon of Italian seasoning and three cups of tomato juice. Next, you're gonna add one can of dark red kidney beans. Now these I had rinsed and drained so they're ready to go. And then one can of cannellini beans, the white cannellini beans rinsed and drained also. All right, then you have one can rinsed and drained of green beans. Now as you can see, my pot is getting really, really full, so just be careful as you're stirring. Now you're gonna add one cup of the little tiny minestrone noodles. These are my most favorite and my kids love them. You can add different noodles if you want to, it's totally up to you. So you're just adding one cup and then I'm gonna add about a cup and a half to two cups of beef broth. Now I don't wanna add too much more because it's gonna overfill. So put your lid on, make sure your knob is turned to sealing, not venting. Now you're gonna cancel what you have going, so you're gonna cancel the saute button, then you're gonna push pressure cook or manual. Now you're gonna go up to six minutes. That's gonna cook your noodles and your vegetables, everything else. When it's done, I let it release on its own for about 10 minutes or so. You can do a quick release as soon as it's done, but I was running some errands real fast. All right, now we're gonna open the lid and see how it is. Oh, it is perfect. The noodles are done perfectly. Everything is cooked all the way through. Now, here is the hard part. You have to mix very, very carefully. Now, if you have an eight quart, this recipe is perfect for an eight quart, but a six quart will still work. All right, I need some more liquid in there, so I'm actually gonna add about one to two cups more of beef broth into my soup. Now, if you noticed, I didn't add a lot of salt and pepper. Um, you can add that sparingly, or you could put it on your table and they can add it to their own bowl of soup. So I'm gonna start with just some olive oil, um, one or two tablespoons, put it in the bottom of your stock pot. Um, and let's see, I'm cooking this over a medium high heat. And then I have one onion here that I've chopped up. And I'm gonna throw that right in. You can hear that sizzle. It smells amazing. Give it a stir and you just wanna cook this until your onions are tender you'll start to see them turn translucent and that's how you know they are done. So cook those for a couple of minutes. Okay, so once your onions are done, it's time to add in the rest of the ingredients. It's basically a dump and go recipe, so it doesn't get any easier. Now, you could use raw chicken and cook it with the onions, but I like to just grab a rotisserie chicken from the grocery store, shed it up, shred it up, and then you're gonna dump it in. So I've got about two cups here of shredded chicken. And then I'm going to add two cans of white beans. If you're watching your sodium intake, make sure that you get a less sodium. But these have been drained and rinsed. And I'm just gonna add them in. The next thing I'm gonna add is a can of chicken broth. Once again, if you're looking to reduce your sodium, Make sure you get a less sodium, but just dump that in on top. And then one of my favorite ingredients in this, I love green chilies. This is just a can of diced green chilies. You don't even have to drain it. You're just gonna go ahead and dump it in to your pot. Okay, we'll give it a quick stir, get everything mixed together. Those green chilies smell amazing in this. They give it so much flavor. They don't really give it heat. So this is a very kid-friendly dish. So don't be intimidated when you hear the word chilies. So now we're gonna season it up. I'm gonna do a teaspoon of cumin. So sprinkle that on top. And then I'm gonna do a teaspoon of salt. And then I've got a teaspoon of oregano. And then if you've got some ground black pepper, just throw some on top, you can do as much or as little as you want. I'm aiming for about a half teaspoon. Grind it up. Okay, there's that. And then last but not least, we're gonna do a pinch of cayenne pepper. This doesn't really add heat. Like I said, it's a kid-friendly dish, but it does add some flavor. It really just brings out a lot of the different flavors going on. So it's totally optional, but I recommend it. Okay. And that basically is it. You are gonna let this simmer for about 30 minutes, um, just on medium to medium heat. And just kind of let those flavors melt together as they just simmer. 
Okay, we'll let this simmer and then we'll come right back. Okay, after this has been simmering for 30 minutes, it's time to add the good stuff that's gonna make it creamy. So, I've got some whipping cream here. You could also use half and half, or if you're trying to watch calories, you could even do a, a fat-free half and half. Um, all of them will make it super creamy and super good, but you just need a half cup of this. So this is a, um, just a half pint. I'm gonna pour in half of it. So there's that. And then I'm gonna add one cup of sour cream. Now this is a light sour cream and it still turns out delicious, but um, you could do full fat or you can do fat free, whatever your family likes, it will work perfect for this. And then you're just gonna go ahead and mix that all together. And suddenly it starts to look all creamy and delicious. First you're gonna start with one can of chicken and dump it right in. Then one can of pinto beans, one can of black beans. Now my beans have been rinsed and drained. Next is one can of corn, but don't drain that. You're gonna dump that right into your Instant Pot. Then we're gonna have one can of diced red tomatoes. Dump everything in, you don't wanna drain that either. And then one can of enchilada sauce. Now I usually use mild enchilada sauce because my kids don't like it spicy. Next we're gonna add two cups of chicken broth and I have a little helper. She really wanted to help. And then for the seasoning, you're gonna add either one packet of taco seasoning or about two to three tablespoons. However much seasoning you like, you can add a little bit more. Then you're just gonna take a spoon and mix it all together. Now you don't have to use canned chicken, you can use normal chicken breasts. Just make sure you cook it accordingly. If you use canned chicken, you're gonna cook it for four minutes on manual. If you have raw chicken, you're gonna go up to 15 minutes. Now, when I do freezer meals, I don't whip up a ton of them at one time. I make one recipe and then I make the same exact recipe and stick that in the freezer. So my trick is I like to use a water pitcher and put a plastic freezer bag just right inside of it. So I'll just do my same steps. A can of chicken, two cans of beans that are rinsed and drained. Then you're gonna add your can of corn, remember leave the juice in there, can of diced tomatoes, and then one can of your enchilada sauce. Now it's gonna get a little bit full, it will seep down just a little. Add your taco seasoning, and then you're gonna add your two cups of chicken broth. Now if you are making this meal to go in your slow cooker, you're gonna cook it for three to four hours on low. Now you can cook it frozen or thawed, it doesn't really matter. Now once all my ingredients are in there, I'm going to slowly wiggle it out and zip it up. Now before I put it in my freezer, I'm gonna mix it a little bit, then take out any excess air that I possibly can get out of there. Now I like to store my freezer meals so they will lay flat and then I can stack them on top of each other. But if you wanna freeze it so it will fit inside of an Instant Pot, put it back inside your pitcher and go ahead and freeze it just like that inside your freezer. All right, my soup is done cooking. I did a quick release just to make it a little bit faster and then I mix it up. I like to serve this with sour cream, cheese, green onions, pretty much everything you have on tacos, that's what you can put on top of it. All right, first I'm going to heat some olive oil in my stock pot. Um, then I'm gonna add my vegetables. We have celery, we have onions, and we have carrots. Now, I'm going to link the original recipe down below. It does a, something a little bit different, but this still works just fine. Next, I'm gonna add some flour so it will thicken up the soup a little bit and cook that for a few minutes. Use my handy dandy can opener, it's my most favorite one. And then dump in my chicken broth. Let that simmer for a few minutes with the bacon and then the potatoes. And mix it really well. After that I'm just going to cover and cook it for about 25 minutes. Now this recipe calls for 4 cups of cream but I do it a little bit different. I do one cup of cream and then three cups of milk, just so it's not so fattening. But if you want it really thick and creamy, you add all four cups of that cream. 
Then last, I'm just gonna drain a can of corn and dump that in. That's totally optional. I just really like it with corn. Then mix it really well. If you want your soup a little bit thicker, go ahead and mash some of the potatoes in there to thicken it up. I added a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper for some flavor. Then just let it simmer for about five minutes. And there you go. I add my favorite toppings, green onions, bacon, and of course, cheese. So I'm gonna start off with the celery. I have three stalks of celery or one cup that I just chopped up. One cup or one whole onion chopped up. Four or five small red potatoes. Then we have one pound of carrots. I just did a bag. One cup of frozen peas. Now one or two cups of beef broth. The recipe doesn't call for Lipton onion soup mix, but I love it. Then you have one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce and salt and pepper to taste. Woo, that's it. Okay, so I'm gonna start by adding my meat to the bottom of my Instant Pot. Then just, you're gonna add everything on top. So I add my celery, my potatoes, my onions. I did all my big things first. So next I'm gonna add my carrots right on top and then my peas are gonna go right on top of the carrots. Now as you can see, I'm getting pretty close to my fill line, so I'm gonna try and spread it down as much as I possibly can. Then I'm adding two cups of beef broth just because I want a little more liquid in there so it will pressurize a little bit better because this Instant Pot is full to the brim. Next I'm gonna add one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce the recipe actually calls for one teaspoon, but I love Worcestershire sauce, so I'm doing one tablespoon. All right, and then you're gonna add your Lipton onion soup mix right on top. I probably should have added that before I added my beef broth, but that's okay. So I'm just gonna put my salt and pepper on top too. You can add more when it's done cooking, but I just added a little. Okay, now I'm just gonna mix in my seasonings a little bit. You don't have to get too crazy because it will all pressurize. Okay, I kind of made sure everything was flat so the lid would go on. Make sure it's on sealing, not venting. I'm gonna go manual all the way up to 30 minutes. Now, I did a quick release because we were starving, but you could let it release on its own if you wanted. Now I'm going to take the lid off and you'll see just how amazing this stew looks. It smells so good. I have a pound and a half of chicken in here already. Then we're gonna add our vegetables. So I have one onion chopped up. It calls for a green pepper, but I didn't have any green peppers. So I'm just working with, uh, I have a little bit of orange pepper, a little bit of red pepper in there, and then cut up a few carrots. You can cut up the big carrots. I like to use little ones because it's literally what I had in my fridge. Okay, then I have a can of diced green chilies. So we'll just pour it in. And a can of corn. I didn't drain any of the juices here. We'll just dump, dump what's in there. I did drain my beans. Now, chili usually have kidney beans. This one's a little bit different. So you're supposed to use pinto beans. Again, I'm just using what I have in my pantry. I have navy beans. They're close enough. Then we have cannellini beans. Then we have a can of diced tomatoes. Okay, we're doing four cloves of garlic here. Um, I like to, when it's four cloves, I just add about two spoonfuls, spoonfuls of garlic. Then we have, this is one of my favorite parts of it, liquid smoke. So we have two teaspoons of liquid smoke we're gonna put in here. Now, if you don't know where liquid smoke is, it's kind of like in the barbecue area, like barbecue sauce, ketchup area. This stuff is my favorite. We need some barbecue sauce, because obviously barbecue chicken chili. So we're gonna put a half a cup of barbecue sauce in here. Um, I'm just gonna guesstimate, because you guys know that I like do that down down below in the description is my all the it's the link for all the spices for the whole recipe for you guys so we have chili powder cumin paprika and salt and pepper there we go then we just have four cups of chicken broth i hope that i grabbed chicken broth i did okay we're fine chicken broth in here we're just dumping it in yes you have to have liquid in order for it to pressurize so we're winning winning at life Okay, I think that's everything. Got my barbecue sauce. That's the most important thing that goes in here. So we're gonna do pressure cook and we're gonna go to 20 minutes. Here we go. Whew. And yeah, now that it's done cooking, you can just walk away. And it literally is that simple. I love dumb go recipes. You can even put this in like in the morning or afternoon, let it sit on 
the keep warm function for hours and it will be all ready when you're done working or done doing things. First, we're gonna start with the vegetables. So I have a red pepper, a green pepper, about three stalks of celery and two cans of clams. Then we have half an onion and four potatoes. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and chop all of these up. I'm sure you would love to see me chop, but for cooking sake, it's a lot easier. Now I'm just gonna dump all of my chopped vegetables into the Instant Pot. Now that all the vegetables are in the bottom of the pot, I'm gonna go ahead and add my clam juice. Now you don't wanna add the clams yet. We're gonna add those at the very end. So keep the little lid on so you can just pour the juice into the Instant Pot. Then I'm gonna add one cup of water into the Instant Pot to help pressurize. All right, now that everything is in for right now, go ahead and put your lid on. Make sure your knob is turned to sealing, not venting. And we are gonna cook this because it's just vegetables. We're going down to seven minutes. So now we're gonna make a little ruse to thicken up the soup. So I have five tablespoons of butter that I'm putting over the stove top, and then I'm going to add in five tablespoons of flour. So that's easy, five and five. So once the butter's all melted, go ahead and mix that together. Now you'll leave it on the stove top for about oh, two to five minutes or so. Now when it's all done, it should look like this. This is the perfect time to add in your milk. So you can add milk or cream. So I added one and a half cups of milk. You can add cream, but we're making it a little healthier here. And you're just gonna continue to whisk that over medium high heat until all of the butter and flour and milk are all mixed together. All right, so now my Instant Pot beeped, so I'm gonna take the pressure out of the Instant Pot with a quick release and then pull the lid off. So all the vegetables are done cooking, so I'm just gonna add my butter and flour and milk mixture. Go ahead and mix that around a little bit and then it's time to add the seasoning. So I'm gonna add about a half teaspoon of pepper, a half teaspoon of dried thyme, and about a half teaspoon of salt. You can add more if you'd like. Then, this is the secret sauce, Tabasco sauce, hot sauce, something to add just a little bit of kick. And then go ahead and add your clams very last. And that is pretty much it to this recipe. You go ahead and just mix it all in, and I just keep it in my Instant Pot on the warm setting until I'm ready to serve. So using the Instant Pot and the stove top at the same time, this recipe was done in 20 minutes. Now you can also serve this recipe with a little bit of parsley on top if you would like. Hey guys, today I am making a loaded vegetable soup. Now I'm gonna make this in my crock pot, but you can totally make it on your stove top. Just cook it until all these vegetables are soft. And I'm gonna show you how to make this um, without any meat if you just are wanting to load up on vegetables, but you could totally throw in some chicken breasts or like ground turkey to give you some added protein and especially if you want to make this a heartier soup if you're serving it as like a main dish. So I'm going to just jump right in and get started. So I've got my slow cooker here. This is a six quart slow cooker. So you want it to be pretty big because we're going to fit a lot of stuff in here. I'm just going to spray some nonstick cooking spray because that always helps with cleanup and then we're gonna just jump right in. Sorry about my baby in the background. This is, this is life, making dinner for your family. So I've got one onion that I've chopped up, and then I'm gonna add about a pound of potatoes. Now I just did red potatoes, and I kept the skins on. I scrubbed the skins, and then I'm just keeping them on, because that's where a lot of the nutrients are. So dump in your potatoes, and then I just chopped up one big sweet potato. I love the color of sweet potatoes, plus the flavor is really good. And then I just cut up some baby carrots. If you're using big carrots, I would say do about two whole carrots. Chop them up. And then I'm gonna do just two stalks of celery. You can go, you can dice those as small as you want or as big as you want, doesn't matter. And then right here, I've got a can of diced tomatoes. I didn't even drain it. I'm just gonna dump the whole thing right in. And then I told you this soup is loaded with vegetables, so I am dumping in a whole bag of frozen mixed vegetables. This one has carrots and peas and green beans and corn. You can really do any vegetables in this soup, it doesn't matter. Okay, then I've got some fresh parsley, about a quarter cup, dump that in. And now we're gonna add our spices and seasoning. So I've got two cloves of garlic, chopped up or minced, whatever you want it to be. Throw that in there. 
And then I'm gonna do just salt to taste. You can do as much or as little as you want. And the great thing is you can always add salt later too, um, after it's done cooking to see you know, how much more flavor it needs. This is just some ground black pepper. Uh, probably do like a quarter teaspoon, just give it a couple twists. Okay, and then garlic salt. You can also use garlic powder. Just kind of put some on there. Um, Allspice, this is not necessary. It's completely optional, but it does give it a really good flavor. And you don't need very much because it's pretty powerful. I'd say maybe an eighth of a teaspoon. And then this one's also optional. This is crushed red pepper. It doesn't really add heat. It adds kind of just some flavor. So put that on there. Now, if you wanted to add protein like chicken, this would be the time to do it. But it's totally good without that also. And then I'm just gonna add four cups of chicken broth. Now, if you want this to be completely vegetarian, you could definitely use vegetable broth. Just kind of use whatever you have on hand. Okay, and there you go. Let me grab a spoon to stir it. I'm gonna give it a good mix, and then you're just gonna cook this on low until your vegetables are tender. I would say um, maybe three to four hours on low, and then check it and see if your sweet potatoes and your red potatoes are soft. If not, you could go another hour or so until they are soft. But that's it, you are completely done. Um, I love those dinners where you can just kind of dump it, set it, and forget it. So you're gonna start by putting two or three chicken breasts in the bottom of your Instant Pot. Now these are chicken tenders. You can use tenders or you can use chicken breasts. Now if you are making this in the slow cooker, you're gonna do the same exact thing that I do in my Instant Pot, except when it's cooking, you're gonna cook for six to eight hours on low. Next, you're gonna add two cloves of garlic. I also like to use the minced garlic, so it's about one teaspoon. Next, you're gonna add one teaspoon of chili powder. Oop, got a little too much there. Next you're going to add one teaspoon of Worcestershire or Worcestershire or whatever you call it, one teaspoon of that sauce. <laughs> then add one teaspoon of Tabasco sauce in it. Now that seems like a lot, but it actually isn't too spicy. If your kids are funny about spice, maybe do a half teaspoon. Then on top of that, I'm going to add one small chopped onion. Next, add one chopped red pepper. Now they didn't have red peppers at my store, so I used an orange one. Then one can of drained black beans. Then you're gonna add one can of corn. You're not gonna drain the corn, dump everything in. Next, add two cups of your favorite enchilada sauce. Then you're gonna add four cups of chicken broth. Now I love to get these big containers because I know it's already four cups and I can just dump the whole thing in without measuring. Next, you're gonna add a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper, and then you're ready to cook. If you're doing the Instant Pot, make sure you turn the handle and make sure that the little thing is on sealing, not venting. If you're cooking with the slow cooker, put the lid on and set it for six to eight hours. With the Instant Pot, you're gonna go manual for 20 minutes. Now when it's done cooking, I did a quick release, so that means I pushed it over to venting and let all the steam out. And I'm gonna take the lid off. Oh, it smells so good. Now I'm just gonna find my chicken and shred it. Now with the Instant Pot, it is going to be really hard to hold on to and it will shred very, very easily. Now when you're done shredding your chicken, you're gonna add one half cup of cream and then about a half a cup of sour cream. I might add a little more because I love when it's nice and creamy. Then when you're done with that, stir it in a little bit so the sour cream can melt and the cream will mix in pretty good. Next, you're gonna add two cups of cheddar cheese. Mix it really well until everything is melted and well combined. Now, if you're doing this in the slow cooker, you're gonna do the same exact thing. You're just gonna make sure it's still on low while your sour cream and cheese are melting. When it's all done, I like to serve it with cheese, so the cheese is melting, some little tortilla strips, and cilantro on top. All right, so I'm gonna start out with my Instant Pot, but you can do the same exact recipe in your slow cooker. So I have three large potatoes here that I'm chopping up. I'm keeping the skin on because it's one less step for me to do. Next, I'm gonna take three chicken breasts. Now these ones are frozen, so I'm gonna show you how to do frozen 
chicken breasts in the Instant Pot. So I always be sure my chicken is on the bottom of my Instant Pot. Now I'm going to add my vegetables on top. So I'm just going to pour in my potatoes. Next, I'm just going to take a small bag of baby carrots, open it up, and dump them in. So I love onion when I'm making a healthy soup. So I'm going to chop up my onion, not in the tiniest pieces, I kind of like bigger chunks. So once I chop them up, then I'll just throw it right on top of the carrots. So for my seasonings, I added a half teaspoon of garlic salt and a half teaspoon of rosemary. So now it's time for the broth. You're going to add eight cups of chicken broth. Now I know that sounds like a lot, but it's actually just enough to cover the vegetables. So if you're making this in your Instant Pot, go ahead and just put it right inside. If you're making it in your slow cooker, same thing. Take your pot, put it right inside of your slow cooker. So back to the Instant Pot, I put the lid on and I'm making sure that it is going to be on sealing, not venting, you want it on sealing. Then you're gonna push your meat or stew button and go up to 25 minutes in your Instant Pot. If you're in the slow cooker, you wanna do it for six to eight hours on low. So I let the pressure release on its own. So instead of bumping it over to venting, I let it sit there for about 20 minutes while the pressure went down and then I could open the lid. So now I'm just finding the chicken, which I was gonna pull it out and put it on that plate, but it just is so soft, it just keeps shredding. So I'm actually gonna shred it right inside of my Instant Pot pot. Now this recipe is perfect for meal prep because it makes a lot. So now before I serve my family or myself, I'm going to grab these awesome meal prep containers, fill it full of about two scoops of my soup, and then put it in my refrigerator for later so I can have a healthy recipe throughout the week. Now if you're just making this for one or two of you, the great thing is you can put it in a Ziploc bag and then freeze it. So you can have it whenever you want another healthy meal. But for now, I'm just gonna scoop myself some up right now and eat it for lunch. Now, I love to put some cheddar cheese on top so my kids will actually eat it, and a little bit of parsley to give it a little more flavor. So I'm gonna add four cups of the sweet potatoes just in the bottom of the bag. There we go. All right, now for the good stuff. So we have one can of black beans, one can of corn. You wanna make sure the liquid's still in here. One can of diced tomatoes. Now, if you're worried about the salt, you can get like um, less salt of diced tomatoes if you want to. There's not a ton in there, but if you're, if you're trying to go eat less sodium. Then we have one red onion just right on top. And then we have two tablespoons of lime juice. And then a half a cup of quinoa. Now you can find quinoa on all aisles. It's down the rice aisle, not hard to find at all. We're just gonna pour that in. Now you're gonna add four to five cups of chicken broth or chicken stock, whatever you can find right now on those shelves. So I'm just gonna just add four today just because it's just one whole box full. It makes my life a whole lot easier. So just dump that all in. There we go. Okay, now for the seasoning, we'll put those on top. Okay, so we have one teaspoon of onion powder, two tablespoons of cumin, and one tablespoon of chili powder. So we'll just go ahead and pour that on. That is all we have. So we're gonna zip this up. Now, the good part about this is there is no meat, so it's gonna cook pretty quickly. So in the Instant Pot, it's gonna cook for about 10 minutes. And then when it's done cooking, you can turn that little knob to venting to let all the pressure out. Um, if you're gonna cook it in the slow cooker, I would suggest, I don't know, maybe like three to four hours on low. Not gonna cook very long because there is no meat. You just need those vegetables tender. Now, if you made it this far, you deserve a handful of some chocolate chips. All right, guys, I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>